Update. Am I the a-hole for refusing to cook for my stepchildren anymore? Original post. There are 16 female and 15 male. My husband and I have been married for 8 years. They have been living with their mom for a month because we caught the virus. Fortunately, they were with their mom and didn't catch it. Normally, we split cost day. Ever since they have returned home, they have been very critical of my cooking. My husband and I usually split chores. He makes the dinner and I make breakfast and lunch. This works for us as my work starts later in the morning while his shift ends earlier in the evening. I try to make them healthy food and spend time with them, but they have been nothing but critical. They make faces, make fun of the dishes I cooked and compare them to their mom's cooking in a manner which is really hurtful. They have been talked to and their father has even punished them. They just don't seem to care. My husband seems to think my cooking is fine. Hell, they don't seem to mind my cooking when he heated it up last week. So I stopped cooking for them. They know how to cook. I had taught both of them how to handle themselves around a kitchen last year and they had no problems before this. I am worried that they are lashing out over something hurtful I did. Teenagers are not known for their emotional maturity and I fear this will further alienate them. But at the same time, my mental health has improved and I do not dread mornings anymore. I still make them lunch, but I don't have to hear them talk smack about my cooking due to my schedule. My husband wants me to be the adult here and he promised to deal with them. He thinks that if I start cooking again, they will calm down. My bonus children are giving me the cold shoulder and it hurts, but I want to teach them that they have to respect the people in their lives, even if they dislike them. They talked to their mom about it and she ranted at me and called me names. My husband is making them breakfast now and they don't seem to mind that change. I had made my peace with them not considering me family. I don't expect them to make me a Mother's Day card or call me mom. I never expected that. That would be amazing, but I know it is not going to happen. I am okay with that. However, I just want them to treat me with respect. Understand that I am an adult in their lives who cares for them and loves them, but they treat me like servant who also pays for stuff. Now for the top comments. They talked to their mom about it and she ranted at me and called me names. This is why they are treating you poorly. Your husband needs to have a sit down with his ex about bad mouthing you to the kids. In my humble opinion, you're doing the correct thing. These are not young children. They are teenagers and they damn sure know what they are doing. You don't need to put up with this treatment just because they're kids. They are rude and their words and actions affect other people. This. Especially suspicious since things seem to have started up after they spent some time at their mom's. Makes me wonder what might have been said while they were over there. Especially since, if I'm reading your post correctly, everything seemed fine for eight years. I doubt their mom was pulling out a full four-course breakfast for them every day. And even if she was, they can't realistically expect someone else to do the same. So someone's up. Not day hall. You said they know how to cook, and if all else fails, they can always go for cereal or a sandwich. They won't starve, and you shouldn't have to put up with their criticism. Oh my god, they're 15 and 16 and someone else cooks them breakfast and makes their lunches? You and your husband are teaching them to remain children instead of becoming adults. It's great that you taught them their way around a kitchen, and no one should be making them breakfast except themselves, especially with their entitled attitude. They're acting like toddlers and your husband is enabling them. You are not a day hall for setting and maintaining healthy boundaries. Yeah, I was making my own breakfast from a much younger age. I just leave out cereal, milk, and bread for them. I'm worried they are lashing out over something hurtful I did. Uh, what did you do that was hurtful? Also, what's wrong with two teenagers making their own toast or cereal and fruit in the morning? I was living out of home already by their ages and made my own damn food three times a day. But even at, say, 12 to 13, I made my own breakfast and school lunch and the parental figures would only ever make dinner. They're not young children. They're fully capable of making their own breakfast and lunch. I'm not voting on your Rahel rating until you answer my question about what you think they may be retaliating over. I have been racking my brains thinking about something I did which would cause this reaction. I can't think of anything. That worries me even more for some reason. Am I being too oblivious to what I did? And now for the update. I made my post, I think, two weeks ago, and a lot has happened. 
I realized that I was not an a-hole for not cooking for them. I continued to not cook for them and they continued to ignore me. It was hurtful, but I was getting used to it. I talked to my husband about enforcing rules and talking to their mother to ensure that we can solve this issue, but he is reluctant to start drama because he is afraid of going back to the court and having to change the custody agreement. However, all this took a backseat. My father received a very bad diagnosis. It is pretty bad. It sent me to a very bad place and I was just getting by on autopilot for a week. My stepdaughter walked in on me crying in my room. I think she was looking for her dad. She sat next to me and apologized. She teared up a little and told me that she's scared that I will force dad to move them permanently to their mothers. That made me cry harder. I told her that even though we may not get on all the time, I always miss them when they were at their mothers and house would feel empty without them here. After this conversation, things are better now. I won't say we are doing fine all the time, but we are doing much better than before. The people who guessed that their mother put them to it were correct. After some a bit more talking to my stepchildren, I realized what that something we did that really hurt them. My stepdaughter told me that we didn't call them when we were sick with the virus. But we did. In fact, we were frustrated that they didn't pick up. But we chalked it up to their mother's very strict screen time policy, where the phones are under her care and not with them, and them being busy with classes. We just resorted to texting them. My hypothesis is that their mother knew the passcodes and she was deleting our missed calls when the phone was with her, and then using our lack of calls to drive a wedge between us. I have not told anyone about this theory, but this seems like a good theory. I have let this thing slide for now as I am more focused on helping my father with his treatment. I really want to thank everyone who commented. I know this is not a happy update, but I want to let people know what happened. Opie, talk to your husband first. But I have an idea. Show your kids your call records and texts you sent when they were at their mom's. They're teens. They're tech savvy enough to understand timestamps and deletions. Tell them you're concerned they didn't get any calls or messages because you want to make sure they have reliable communication with you and their dad. If your theory is true, the kids will put two and two together and understand who's really the problem. If that's the case, it may be worth talking to a lawyer and revisiting custody. Besides the whole parental alienation thing, interfering with communication with the custodial parent is dangerous and not in the best interest of the kids. I'm sorry to hear about your dad. I hope you're able to spend as much time with him and the kids as possible. This is a really good idea. Opie, I understand you don't want to add any fuel to the drama and your husband's worries, but I think the kids do need to understand what their mother is capable of. I'm sorry about your dad, Opie. I hope it gets better for you both. And it really is a safety issue with emergency communications. What if dad got into a car accident and the kids needed to come to the hospital? Would the mom just decline calls? What if one of the kids forgot medication at the house? It's not just douchey. It's dangerous. Wow, I'm so sorry for you and your dad. But happy you seem to be on track with the stepkids. Their mother seems to be playing quite a role in this. It's really screwed up. I get so depressed when I read about all the horrible parents out there who use their kids as a weapon. Show stepdaughter the missed calls and messages from your phones. That should convince her that both of you did try to contact them. And contact a lawyer and take X back to court. This is straight up parental alienation. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to be part of my stepfamily's business? So my mom married my stepdad when I was 12. Both had kids. Mom had me, 25 female, and my siblings, 20 female, 19 male, 18 female, and my stepdad has his three, 18 female, 16 male, 16 female. We lost our dad a year before. Stepdad lost his first wife three years before. As the oldest, I blended less well than the others. I'm fine with everyone. I get along with everyone, and I have no problems. But I don't love them. I don't consider my stepdad my dad or even as much as a parental figure as they would like. My step-siblings don't feel the same as my siblings. It's not really a big deal. I can treat them all the same and fake a bond and stuff that I don't feel, and I have no issues with any of them like I said. But I do have some boundaries. Like, I kept my last name when my siblings changed theirs. And for Father's Day, my card was always separate from the main one because I was not okay getting him a dad-slash-father-father's-day card. It had to be stepdad. 
Now, my mom and stepdad want to open up a family restaurant, and my siblings and step siblings all want to be involved, and I don't. I expressed this to them as not my thing, but my mom knew I was saying no in part because of how I feel, and she told me it was making it very obvious because I have been involved in my paternal family business since high school, and that it looks like an out rejection. I told her the simple fact is I'm not interested. And they have a lot of people already involved, so it's not like it's a big deal. She told me I'm making myself look like the red-haired stepchild, and I told her that I am a stepchild,、I、have a step parent. That's not a bad thing, and it's not something I'm ashamed of. She told me I didn't have to be a stepchild; I could have had another dad. I told her I could have, but I didn't want that. She told me the family business wants and needs me. I ask her, since pictures of the grandparents and deceased relatives are going up on the walls in this idea, would the deceased parents be going up there too? And there was silence. My brother told me they're sad I don't want to be part of it, and it would be such a cool family thing to have. And now my mom's words are stuck in my head. Mare hal. Now for the comments. Not day hal. Seriously, stay away. If you don't want to be part of it, stay away from it. The restaurant business has a level of volatility that's unlike any other industry. It tears families apart. Starting a restaurant and making a profit from it is very difficult and easily failed. Rent is expensive and overheads are high. I can write a whole essay as to why family restaurants can fail. This: the hours are long, the work is not fun, and everyone is exhausted at the end of the night. Most restaurants fail in the first few years because it's so difficult. Stick to your decision, Opie. Use any excuse you can, but steer clear of this mess. Not day hall. Not day hall. How many family businesses does she think you need to be a part of? And if you've had boundaries since you were 12 about how blended you wanted to be, why is she still harping on this 13 years after the fact? I think she thought I would feel like the odd one out, or like I was missing out on something. But I have never felt that way, and I know that bothers her because she wants me to be a part of it. Clearly not a hole. You feel what you feel, or even not. It is your choice. If it doesn't feel right to participate, then don't participate. It is only up to you. You don't need to do things just to make others feel better. Do what is good for you. Not a hole. It would be counterproductive to put someone who's not passionate about the business responsible for said business, anyways. You have your own goals and aspirations that you want to do, and should not be chained to a career your family made. Last story is titled "Am I a hull for throwing my sister-in-law and her kids out after calling her a bad person because she called me a bad mom?" My 33 female husband's 33 male oldest sister Rachel, 41 female, loves to stop by so her kids can spend time with mine. Rachel can be annoying. But she and my husband have a good relationship, and I always wanted to cultivate healthy relationships between everyone. But last weekend, I hit a breaking point and caused some added damage than was already done, potentially. So my youngest is six, and he has sensory issues. He has many issues with clothes. Can't wear certain fabrics. Can't stand socks. Even needs special underwear and would go around naked if he could. Sister-in-law has always been into knitting sweaters and gives them as gifts. She has also gifted clothes to the kids before. We explained many times about our son, and my husband has said while we appreciate the gifts, he can't wear them without being driven crazy. So she was looking through some photos while she was here last weekend. My husband was working, and she commented that none of the holidays pictures had him in the sweater, and that he never wears the clothes she buys. I was a little frustrated by trying to explain it as easily as I could. She then told me she had something for him. Pulls out a pair of space socks and says they would be perfect for him and his interest in space. I told her he couldn't wear them and they drive him crazy. She told me we catered too much to him, that he should be made wear what people buy'd make for him, and I'm not being a good parent letting him go through life rejecting clothes. I lost it. I told her that if I'm a bad mother, then she's a crappy person for judging me when all I'm doing is my best, and for pushing constantly to get her way. I told her we had explained things as clearly as we possibly could, and we have been over this for over three years now. And she's still not willing to open her mind to the possibility that we're all just doing our best. 
She told me good parents help their kids be better than rejecting stuff. And I told her to take her kids and leave because she was not welcome in my home anymore. My husband was pissed at her sister when he heard what went down. And he heard on his lunch break because she sent him 30 messages and left three voicemails on his phone. The rest of the family say I should have not treated her like that in front of the kids. And kicking the kids out was wrong. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Thanks for standing up for your kids' sensory issues. I didn't have that growing up and I can still feel awful tights in my legs, scratchy dresses, non-stretch pants. Ugh. I'm 35 and I buy my favorite clothes in multiples because they feel good. You can tell your sister-in-law to go to hell. Enforcing people with sensory issues go wear certain clothes is a special kind of hell in itself. You would think she would take the hint after three years of explaining it to her in plain English that the son could not wear her gifts. Enough is enough. She showed absolutely no consideration for the son's sensory issues. And the nerve of her of pushing her ideology of what constitutes a bad parent just because you allow him to wear what is most comfortable. She can take her snarky butt and her unwanted gifts back with her. Not day hall. Isn't it funny that the people who pester you over and over again are always the same people who are shocked to pick at your face when you hit your limit and go off? And somehow always blame you for it. I was only trying to help you. You did not have to lash out for such a small thing. You're too sensitive. How they managed to paint the picture in their mind as them being the victim of this situation appalls me. Not the a-hole. She's the a-hole. Buying gifts you don't want and wanting to force your child to wear them. If she's so positive about wanting the kid to wear it, why not ask you which fabrics she should buy? She's mad because her opinion is not winning an issue that is not about her. Good riddance, in my opinion. Not the a-hole. After being told on previous occasions of your child's sensory issues, it seems a bit disrespectful of her to ignore said issues to continue gifting clothing that your son can't wear. She especially has no right to get angry, invalidate your son's sensory issues, and call you a bad parent for being understanding and accommodating to him.